This is week two. Ignite your performance, eight weeks to unleashing your potential. Week two is all about your journey. This is a little bit more detail in just thinking about your strengths. As you know, you have two options. Option one is completing your strengths map. Option two is your life map, or you can do them both. Now, doesn't matter which. In the case of the strengths map, you're going to select your strengths and then go backwards. Where did I first see this? How did it come up? Was it harder? Did I develop it over time? What are the patterns that you see, etc. The other option, which is your life map, is when you pick events, then you notice what happened. What's the circumstance? What's the situation? How did I respond? What did I do? What did I do well? What was the struggle in it? And then teasing out your strengths. Both can reveal lots of inf interesting information. Before we wrap this second video, I just want to talk a little bit about strengths to wet your whistle with um, some more examples of strengths. So before I get into the detail, I want to share a quote. One of my great mentors and somebody I worked with as a colleague is a man named Brett Costin. He's a coach. And he says, instead of striving to become greater than ourselves, we should strive to become more of ourselves. So instead of striving to become greater than ourselves, think about that. Isn't that what we're often doing? We just want to be something that we're not or be somehow so great in so many ways. And the fact is, if we become more of ourselves, we really are all that we've ever needed to be and want to be by being more of ourselves. That's what this program will really help you do. Understand exactly who you are at your best with great detail, become more of it, and actually be able to even perform at even greater levels with less effort when you're being more of what you're meant to be and who you are. So let's talk for a moment about just some strengths. I'm gonna give you examples. I was working with a young woman in her 20s. She's very persistent, tenacious. When she did the um, strengths map, looking backwards, her mother shared a story about when she was two years old on the beach and how this young woman, when she was two, wouldn't walk, wouldn't walk home. And the mother was stubborn herself and wouldn't carry her daughter. And the daughter, who is my client, said she would not put her legs down to walk. Her mother said no way would the daughter put her legs down. So there was a standoff. The mom wouldn't carry her, the daughter wouldn't walk. One hour later, the mom finally gave in, picked up the daughter and carried her home. So my client, her persistence was around, even at two, obvious. Another great example, I have a client, she's really good with money. She manages over a billion dollars in profit and loss responsibility for a major corporation. So if you ask her, how did you get to be that way? She will tell you about her mother, who was a working mother, single working mother, teacher, who would leave the minute school was out in May, that mother would pack up and leave for the summer. And she would leave her daughter, who might be as young as 14, with all the bills, maybe $20, and say, you're gonna need to get a job to pay all these bills, good luck. This woman, looks back and really credits her mother for helping her develop an intense focus on fiscal responsibility that just has taken her so far in her career. It became a passion. Okay, other examples. So there are people who have great grids. By a great grid, I mean, they're able to take in lots of information. Maybe it's at the 20,000 foot level, 40,000 foot level, big picture, but then populate that grid with detail and then understand how everything connects, the context, the themes, the patterns, and then be able to pluck something out of that grid and share it in context and be able to put it back in the grid and then again, pull something else out and something else out. As opposed to somebody else that learns lots of information and forgets some and can't exactly see how it all relates, which is not bad, but there's an extraordinary skill in somebody who can take all of this information and put it in a grid and then pull something off the shelf, use it, and put it back on the shelf. When she did this exercise, she said that her mother said when she was little that they were driving on the highway and it was bumper to bumper and the mother cursed the traffic. 
said, damn it, look at all this traffic. And the two-year-old said, mommy, aren't we part of the traffic? And so she really saw that as an example of her early interest in connecting, dotting, dot to dot, connecting things, tying things together, understanding how everything relates. Okay. A client, I'm not a client. I interviewed a woman a couple of weeks ago. She's a meteor meteorologist. And she talked about, um, you know, think about meteorology. You're always anticipating what's coming ahead. Hard to do. You're predicting weather. Yes, you rely on science, but think of it. You're predicting weather. So she became really good at it. But then she talked about something interesting. And I talk about that as seeing around corners anticipating what's ahead. Some people have the ability to take this piece of information, attach it to this piece of information, and this piece, and this piece, and see a pattern, and see how that would go forward. Seeing around a corner. Now, think about the negative of that. Anxiety. This meteorologist admitted during the interview that she's had tremendous anxiety because she could see around a corner but do it in a dark way. What could go wrong? What else could go wrong? Et cetera. And it caused a lot of anxiety for her. So I say to you, the reverse is true. If you've been a person who's had anxiety, seeing around corners and anticipating the future, you also might have a propensity for being able to see around the corner with things that don't cause you anxiety. By the way, if somebody does have a propensity for seeing what could happen, anticipating what could happen, in, that can be very useful in some careers, right? Some positions. Some people will discover that they've always been very inventive. Maybe they're able to see possibilities today and imagine how this fact relates to that fact and come up with solutions that are very creative, innovative. And when they look back, they're saying, oh, I always was an inventor. I never really felt great about it because I didn't invent anything or patent anything or really pull anything off. But looking back, I see I was always fascinating with, fascinated with inventing solutions. Also, I think this is interesting. I know somebody who changed her name when she was little. Wildly, radically, two different names changed her name. Her parents were totally against it, sat her down and said, you should not change your name. Her teacher said, you should not change your name. I mean, everybody in her life told her not to change her name, every adult. She did it anyway. I'd like to have her on my team. You talk about somebody that can meet up again, you know, deal with resistance, overcome resistance, and also who can pull something off, implement, implement something. A lot of people want to change their names and never do. They're never successful at it. So when, you guys, when you're thinking about your strengths, have a little bit of fun with this. This is sort of a curiosity puzzle. If somebody was really curious, if they're very curious now, you start to wonder, when did I become curious? How did I become curious? I interviewed a guy last week who's really good at developing people. Well, when we explored his, where to come from, the seeds of this, his grandfather had a third grade education and decided that every member of his family would be highly educated and he developed them, he made it happen. He didn't even have money, he made it happen. This person's father continued the family tradition through teaching, and now he is a sports insider who found that his truest passion when he was managing teams was when you're managing teams, he felt more than even being an agent, he felt that he could really influence the players in a very positive way. So send me any questions you have, insights, observations, I'll see you on the coaching call, but I hope you have a great time with this exercise. Take care.